The Novation Circuit Tracks is not quite the Circuit 2 that a lot of people were expecting, but I think it's brilliant, and today I want to talk about that. <music> This video is going to be divided into three parts. The first part is going to be for people completely new to the circuit, trying to figure out exactly what this thing is and whether it's right for them. The second part will be dedicated to kind of quality of life improvements that have been made from the original circuit to the circuit tracks. And the third part will be what makes it unique, what makes this thing special. And that will include a lot of hands-on demonstration. So you really get an idea as to what makes this thing powerful. So first of all, if you are completely new to the Novation circuit, and are trying to see if this is right for you. The Innovation Circuit is a completely standalone, self-contained, and portable music production machine. And that goes for both the original and the tracks. This is entirely portable, battery powered. You don't need to plug anything else into it other than a pair of headphones, and you can make entire songs just on this. Both have two synth tracks built in, four drum tracks. You can record in melodies and drum patterns or program them in pretty easily and intuitively. You can mix stuff, launch different clips to build up a full arrangement, much like on a launch pad. This is by the same company that makes a launch pad. And it's an incredibly fun and intuitive and hands-on and portable way to make electronic music. The end results are not gonna be quite as polished as something that you would make in a digital audio workstation, AKA a DAW, but you can get pretty close and the two synth tracks aren't as limiting as you would think, especially because the circuit tracks adds to MIDI tracks that I will get to a little bit later in this video. In short, if you are a beat maker and want a more hands-on way to make beats and wanna to try to get away from the computer a bit, maybe even have a portable setup, this is definitely a good option, especially because it's one of the lower cost options that still gives you quite a bit of power. And if you are trying to get into the dollless music production world in general, once again, this is a really good entry point with a lot of room for you to grow into it. And once again, I'm going to get into that as this video goes on. And the synth engine, while being fairly old, I think is fairly versatile. People's opinions differ on it a bit, but I think if used well, it can be fairly versatile. It's capable of some kind of gritty stuff and some more vintage stuff. Good for modern EDM and kind of throwback electronic music as well. Those are some super quick audio examples, but note that I have made albums worth of music on the original Novation Circuit, and I fully anticipate the same being the case with the new Novation Circuit tracks, and I've also made a ton of videos about the original circuit, and I'm in the process of making a ton of videos about the tracks. So let's move on to what is new in the tracks in terms of like workflow, build, quality of life updates, and whatnot, kind of the smaller updates that can add up to make a much nicer experience. First of all, for the most part, with one glaring exception that I'll get to in a little bit, the new circuit feels much much more premium in terms of the way that it's built. It's much thinner, that does come at a cost, but once again, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, it's got a much smoother, sleeker finish. The pads are more solid and they've removed the rounded off corners and closed the gaps somewhat. And the stiffness of the pads and the buttons is kind of up a little bit. Not so much that you're gonna like hurt yourself pressing on them, like it's a very small difference, but it overall makes the unit feel more solid. It seems like Novation had been looking at what Native Instruments was doing with the Machine Mark III and the Machine Plus and said, I want some of that. So the design kind of replicates that and feels a lot more premium and a lot more kind of sleek and polished and fancy, I guess. And it's got the clicky buttons. However, the thinness that I mentioned, you know, this is much thinner than the original, comes at a cost, which is battery life. This one hurts, I'm not gonna lie, and I'm kind of frustrated with Novation for this. I totally get the desire to move away from AA batteries because uh, the original circuit definitely consumes them like there's no tomorrow, and so I understand the desire to have a rechargeable internal battery instead. 
However, it only has four hours of life. That's doable. But more importantly, according to the manual, it's not removable or replaceable. That sucks. And I hate it. However, I will uh, place a little bit of doubt that that's actually the case. My brother and I removed one of the strips on the bottom of the unit, and sure enough, that revealed some screws there. So you could theoretically unscrew that and open up the unit. You might have to deal with some plastic clips on the inside, but we didn't take it that far. So it's maybe possible to unobtrusively open the unit. I'm not really sure where one would get a replacement battery, but it's may be possible. This is something that would probably be worth exploring for someone more tech savvy and braver than I am. As it is, the battery is one of the components of consumer electronics that's the first to go out, and that definitely kneecaps this in terms of being a long-lasting device. The one silver lining is that you can easily power it off of just like a really normal phone charger, like an Anchor power bank. This thing is fairly inexpensive, and it powers this absolutely no problem, so that does future-proof it a bit because these are cheap and easily replaceable and still keep it fairly portable. However, um, I don't like the kind of planned obsolescence element that you've seen crop up in this. I think that's really unfortunate. Once again, I think I understand why they did it, but I would love to see some support for removing the battery and properly replacing it. Next up, let's jump into some specific quality of life and workflow improvements. This is not an exhaustive list and it's not meant to be a tutorial, so I'll be going pretty quick here. I just wanna give you a quick hands-on demonstration of a few things that I think are worth mentioning. First off, we now get a click. Unfortunately, we don't get a count in, which would have been nice to have, but uh, I will definitely take it. There's still no screen. Um, in my opinion, this is a feature, not a bug. Novation's design for the original circuit and also this is incredibly clever, very intuitive, and I think having a screen and relying on that would break it a bit. I really like the fact that the pads are the screen and I find working with them quite quick and easy to pick up and I wouldn't trade that for having a screen. I prefer it without one. Novation has made a bunch of little changes to how this thing handles patterns. First of all, you'll notice that there are only four showing here. There are still eight patterns per track. You just have to page down to get to them. And if you want to chain all eight together, you just hold one, go down. And now all eight are chained together. That still works fine. You cannot chain patterns out of order anymore. So on the original, you could hold down shift and then chain stuff in whatever order you want. That is no longer the case, which is really unfortunate. I hate to see that go. However, there is a workaround. If you go into Mixer, you now have scenes. And this is kind of taking after uh, the Roland MC-101 and other devices like that, where you have groupings of patterns living in these different scene slots. So you can chain these together as well. So what this means is that if I want something to go out of order, I can assign this to a scene, shift to like lock that one in, go to a different scene. Let me just change to a different pattern. Assign that scene. I can now chain these together. So by thinking ahead a little bit and being kind of careful about how I assign uh, scenes, that'll give me the effect of being able to chain patterns out of order. It's really not too bad, and it does allow you to basically lock in uh, an out of order chaining, so you never have to redo that chaining once you've set it up, even if you want to go in and edit individual patterns. Another little improvement that's pretty nice to have, the drum tracks are now uh, properly independent of each other, and they each have their own slot for patterns that act completely alone. So for instance, if I want to chain together uh, just stuff from drum one, I can do that. Notice it did not affect drum two. Uh, same deal over here. These all act completely independently of each other now, which is nice to have. There have also been some major improvements made to how the patterns themselves work. So let me mute a bunch of these tracks so I can give these uh, some focus. So that is one pattern that is now two bars long, AKA 32 steps long. So you activate that by hitting this button and then I can page back and forth between the two patterns. And you'll notice the difference is that last note. And that's all living on one pattern. So that's super nice to be able to have. Allows you to get more out of fewer patterns. So you're less likely to fill up all of your pattern slots before you want to. You also have the ability to change the speed of patterns. So if I go to pattern settings, 
this is just normal speed. I could also change it, say, to half. And you see how the playhead's moving at half the speed. I could also double it. <laughs> and you've even got some like triplet type stuff. definitely get into some kind of polyrhythms and polymeters with this. And you can go even slower if you want at a quarter speed. If you're thinking, uh, why would you want that? The main place where that would really come in handy is if you want a really long uh, chords section to just go on and on, but you do want it to re-trigger itself uh, at a regular interval. Because if you tie notes, as far as I understand, It'll just kind of go on and on forever, but the sequencer still has the limitation of not allowing any note to go longer than uh, the length of 16 steps. Changing the speed of a pattern allows us to get around that because if I want a chord to ring out for two bars without re-triggering, I just make this half the speed. Same if I want it to ring out four bars without re-triggering, make it a quarter of the speed. You don't have to do any weird uh, tempo shenanigans because that's all just built into here. There are also some ways to kind of change the pattern. These are not mutate, by the way. I'll show you mutate in a second. So this is forwards, this is backwards. This is ping pong. And then this is random. So it'll just pick random steps and cycle through them. And it is truly random. Like it'll probably never repeat the same way twice. You'll also note that this sounds weird because I have some reverb automation going on with this specific track. I can also show you mutate real quick. Now your mileage may vary with this. I've had it give out some good results and some kind of meh ones. First of all, it's destructive. So duplicate your pattern first if you want to save it. So those are some drums for some context. I'm gonna hop into here, shift, mutate. So it just takes the existing notes that you've already got in your pattern and reshuffles them permanently. And then you can edit that further after the fact and just keep mutating it until you get something cool. That's not really working for this one. Uh, like I said, your mileage may vary, but that is cool to have. And for even further randomness, let me get back to this normal patch. We now have the ability to put probability for different steps which is a lot of fun. I especially use this for percussion tracks. So let me demonstrate that with this track. So I've just got a bunch of sound effects loaded onto drum four and each of these have some probability assigned to them. So this one has a very low probability, so it won't trigger all that often. This has a bit of a higher probability. And this one triggers just all the time. This triggers most of the time, so on and so forth. So you're probably never gonna get quite the same percussion pattern twice. And this is nice for adding some interest or variation or even a bit of chaos to a part. And finally, for this section of the review, Note how they've done a lot more like button per function labeling. So they took everything that they did in the updates and then uh, did them on purpose, essentially, and thought ahead and put labels on them. So a lot of the shift functions are now labeled and you can also double tap to get between different windows. They've made an effort to label the knobs and sound designers can choose to uh, kind of adhere to this format or not, that's up to them. And they gave stuff dedicated buttons, like now there's a dedicated preset button, for instance. And also I should mention that this preset controls MIDI CCs. For these, I'm not gonna get into MIDI CCs here, but that is an incredibly powerful thing to have when working with dedicated synths because it basically allows you to have like multiple new LFOs to a synth because you can automate all this stuff, either step automation or live recording automation. Once again, I'm not going to get too deep into that, although I will get deeper into working with external synths in just a little bit. I should also mention that you can still switch between sessions just like you can on the original where you are on one session, then you select the next one and it'll just right on beat cleanly switch to the next one so you can create very drastic changes in an arrangement or string multiple songs together. That's still present 
present on this. Speaking of sessions, this is another thing that they've added. You can now have a lot more sessions and multiple packs loaded onto this thing if you insert a micro SD card. Unfortunately, you can't just drag stuff directly onto the micro SD card and call it a day. You still have to load stuff in via components. The micro SD card acts only as storage, but being able to expand its storage is quite nice, and you can uh, switch between multiple packs, and they each have their own uh, patches and samples and sessions all loaded in there. You can even duplicate a pack if you filled up all of your sessions for one pack, and then just erase all of them, and then just keep going. That means that you don't have to just fill up this device, and then uh, back it up and nuke everything on it you can actually uh, load a lot more onto this thing and it can kind of be a bank of ideas and songs. To answer a few frequently asked questions, uh, the sound engine is the exact same as the previous one. Some people have noted that it sounds like a little punchier and I've kind of noticed that as well. I'm wondering if that's just a placebo because of this thing feeling fancier or if it's because of the master compressor that they've added. I don't really know if there's a whole lot of control we have over that. I'd like to get more access to that if possible, but for the moment, that's there, that's good to know. Sound engine is not any different though. And some people are gonna be disappointed about that. Once again, I think it sounds fine, but I totally understand if people are bummed. And another thing that has been frequently asked about that they uh, chose not to add for whatever reason is audio over USB. That is not a capability that this thing has. You still have to just record the outputs and there's no like multi-tracking or anything, except of course for MIDI, which is the exact same as the original. If you connect it to your computer via USB and load up your DAW, you can record multi-track MIDI into there and adopt kind of a hybrid workflow where this just becomes a sketch pad, a portable, powerful sketch pad, and then uh, you actually use VSTs for your synth sounds. I should mention that if you were hoping to get an upgraded sound engine and audio over USB, maybe an extra built-in synth track, and maybe the ability to like chromatically flip samples and all that kind of stuff. You might not be looking for a Circuit 2, you actually might be looking for a Roland MC-101. And I did an entire video comparing the two, and I've done an entire review of the Roland MC-101 now that it's had a bunch of firmware updates and has really become a fast, fun, powerful little device. I'd say that if you were disappointed by this, please stay tuned because I'm going to explain the major thing that makes this thing so special in a moment. But if you see that and are still like, well, I don't really need it to do that, uh, look into the Roland MC-101. I've done a lot of content here on this channel about it. That might be a little more up your alley. And of course, don't forget that we are going to be seeing the Innovation Circuit Rhythm later this year, and I will be sure to cover that once it's out. So we've talked about a bunch of little quality of life improvements and uh, tweaks to the workflow, but all of those might not be enough to make it worth upgrading for you. However, this is what makes the circuit tracks truly special. And I wanna give a hands-on demonstration of it because I think a lot of people have missed just how cool this is. And I do wanna be clear, not everyone's gonna need this and not everyone's gonna even want it. But uh, for those of us who do, it's really cool. And they've done something really clever here. So let me just play what I've got going here and then I'll walk you through why it's cool. <laughs> This is uh, the Micro Freak. And those are the built-in synth engines. And all of that is working together and the only audio output going is uh, the stereo out into my audio interface. Essentially, what this thing does is it not only adds to MIDI tracks, but it also adds to input tracks. These cannot record stuff like directly into this as like an audio file that you can then manipulate. What it does is it essentially turns this into a mixer for external gear. So this is like the beginning and the end of a complete synth setup. You make something on here, you sequence it, you use the super intuitive like sequencer and all that kind of stuff, record in parts, and then you use these two MIDI tracks to send MIDI to external devices, in this case, these two synths. And then you take the audio from the external devices and bring that into the circuit to get processed. So you'll notice, for instance, that the audio of the Volca Keys
is getting side chained by the kick and is getting sent to the reverb. That's all happening directly in this one device. Same deal with the Microfreak. Uh, that's also getting reverb and delay. These are the external devices, remember? So in essence, this does actually solve two of the things that people have been wanting in the new circuit. They've been wanting new synth engines, and they've been wanting additional tracks. This does both of those things, just not in the way that a lot of us expected. And I've mentioned this in a video before, but essentially think of this like Kirby from the Smash games. It has the ability to absorb other synths and steal their powers. That's what it's doing here. And so now you've got four simultaneous synth tracks, two of them with whatever synth you could possibly want, and it's all being brought into here. This is a capability I have not seen in something this cheap or something this compact. I have not been one for uh, kind of a table full of gear type setup. Typically, I like minimalist setups, but this makes it so clean to set up that it's got me kind of viewing my dedicated synths in a new light and saying, oh, what combinations can I use and how can I really integrate these into the circuit. I've got some other synths that I'm going to try setups as well in future videos. These are just ones that are kind of good for demonstration and are some typical kind of budget beginner synths that have a lot more power than one would think. And this unlocks that. Like I said, really clever. It goes beyond just having two MIDI tracks. It makes the circuit really the brains and the mixer of a setup. And you've already seen the power of that setup in some of the intro beats uh, that introduced this video. It really expands what the circuit is capable of and really kind of defines it as being unique among its budget groove box competitors. Because while those other groove boxes can absolutely sequence external synths, sometimes with an incredible amount of depth, this uh, takes that a step further and assimilates synths into itself. Once again, that's not needed for everyone, but for those of us who uh, do have some external synths lying around or trying to kind of get into that world in a way that doesn't have a whole lot of setup required, this is really cool. Like, I didn't even bother buying an audio interface with more than two inputs because I've never needed that, and that continues to be the case. I don't have to bring another mixer. I don't have to add in effects pedals if I don't want to to get sidechain or to get uh, reverb and delay onto these synths, which don't have a reverb built in, and this doesn't have delay built in either. That's all handled by this. Once again, it's the beginning and the end of a setup, and I think that is incredibly clever and is helping to push this whole groove box thing forward and push this even further from just a budget sketch pad to a genuinely pro audio tool. I should also quickly mention that this doesn't even necessarily kill the portability of this because it does have the internal battery and you can easily copy uh, patterns from the synth tracks to the MIDI tracks. You can just uh, hit duplicate, boom that's now living on here, like these operate on the exact same kind of sequencer programming, which means that I could have the circuit by itself just making beats on the go as I would have done before lockdown and just come up with four separate synth parts that would go well together. I'd only be able to hear two at a time, but once I've come up with four parts in all the pattern banks, I could just copy patterns over to the MIDI one and two tracks and then uh, flesh out a jam at a later date. So all the composition would still happen on here if I wanted it to, and then I could just work in external synthesizers after the fact. Or sometimes I'll just come up with a couple of parts and say I'll finish this later when I'm at my full setup. That hybrid workflow or a bunch of different hybrid workflows are totally possible with this thing, and that, in my opinion, makes it so it doesn't kill its uh, portability. If you would like to see further demonstration of the Innovation Circuit Tracks in action, where I make beats from scratch and uh, do jams, I've got a bunch of other videos on that with a ton more on the way, so you can check all of those out uh, somewhere on the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.